In this A-level IB biology video, we're going to be looking at all things concerning this super important process, which is meiosis. Remember, it's a cell division type, the other one being mitosis. And the crucial thing here is that it's responsible for making gametes, which remember are sex cells. So in females, we're talking about eggs, and in males, we're talking about sperm. Now, just as a little reminder, remember if we have a regular animal cell over here, here's the nucleus, in a normal body cell, so a somatic cell, remember that that will contain 23 pairs of chromosomes, so in total 46, and we call this number 2n. And remember the name we ascribe to that is a diploid number of chromosomes. So what does diploid mean? It means containing 23 pairs of chromosomes, so 46 which is a 2n number. Remember with our sex cells, eggs and sperm, now these join at fertilization, and so therefore the egg must contain 23 chromosomes, as must the sperm, and we call this a haploid number, so it's effectively half, and therefore it's an n number of chromosomes rather than 2n. That's just a simple mathematical way of representing the number of chromosomes so in gametes, you have an n number of chromosomes. In a normal body cell, you have a 2n number. The reason for the haploid number of chromosomes in the sperm and the egg is so that when they join at fertilization, you obviously end up with n plus n equals 2n, which is the normal number of chromosomes that you find within a body cell. So now we really need to look at meiosis and the actual processes. So we'll look at this step by step. Let's just start by writing this comment so that we really know what we're talking about. Meiosis is a process which halves the chromosome number. And we've already said that it produces gametes. So how does this occur? Well, notice that a diploid nucleus, that's one containing a 2n number of chromosomes, divides twice to form four haploid nuclei. So each of those nuclei contains n number of chromosomes. In order for this to take place, remember that the DNA of the chromosome must be replicated, and that occurs before the first cell division, and it ensures that the chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. And I'll write that now. And just to draw you a really simple diagram to show what that actually means, here's your centromere and that acts to join the two sister chromatids. So there's one sister chromatid, and here's the other. Lastly, notice that it's the separation of pairs of homologous chromosomes that occurs in the first division of meiosis that actually causes the halving of the chromosome number. So now we're going to go through the stages of meiosis. Notice that there are two stages, meiosis one and meiosis two. Let's now add annotations to show what's going on at each stage. So, do remember that the order is always PMAT, so it always goes prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and you'll see that from the diagram. So let's add a few annotations. So in prophase 1, the chromosomes pair up. The chromosomes in each pair are homologous. Remember that this means that they contain the same genes, but that these may contain different alleles. Now what happens in metaphase 1 is that the pairs of chromosomes line up on the equator, which remember is the centre of the cell, and they attach to the spindle microtubules. It's important for you to notice that, remember that we have these pairs of chromosomes. Now the spindle fibres attach to different chromosomes in each pair, ensuring that one moves in this direction and the other one moves in the opposite direction, so they'll migrate to opposite poles. Now looking at anaphase 1, and really remember that the homologous chromosomes start migrating to opposite poles of the cell. Crucially, this is what halves the chromosome number. And then finally, telophase 1, as always, the nuclear envelope reforms. Notice that in telophase 1, when the two nuclear envelopes reformed, you get a separation of the two cells, which, remember, is cytokinesis. 
But unfortunately, now we have to talk about what takes place in Meiosis 2. But really, in Meiosis 1, the main thing to take away from here is that you get a halving of the chromosome number. Now, entering prophase 2, remember we have two diploid cells. And crucially, at this point, they divide again. And that's where the two cell divisions come in when we're talking about meiosis. In metaphase 2, the chromosomes line up at the equator again. And then crucially in anaphase 2, the centromeres divide, which remember is the central portion. So you end up with this situation where your chromosomes look like this. And then once the centromeres divide, effectively you have chromatids because you don't have an entire chromosome anymore. And it's these chromatids which migrate to opposite poles of the cell. And then lastly, in telophase 2, the nuclear envelopes reform, cytokinesis occurs, so the breaking down of the cell membrane in order to cause separation, and therefore you have four daughter cells, each containing a haploid number of chromosomes. And remember, we'll use N to represent that. And here are the four daughter cells. And just to make sure you guys properly get what's going on, let's have a look at this summary table. So before meiosis even begins, how many cells did we start with? Well, there was only one parent cell. In terms of the n number of chromosomes, well, because that parent cell was diploid, it contained a 2n number of chromosomes. And how many chromatids made up each chromosome? Well, it was two, because remember your chromosome looked like this. So it consisted of one, two chromatids. However, at the end of meiosis 1, which remember I told you in summary, caused the halving of the chromosome number. So how many cells have we got at this point? Have a look at the diagram. We can see that there are two cells. Remember we said the whole point of meiosis 1 was to halve the chromosome number, which is why we have an n number of chromosomes. How many chromatids make up each chromosome? Again, that's two. One, two. What about at the end of meiosis 2? So how many cells? Well, we know the whole point of meiosis is that we make four daughter cells each containing a haploid number of chromosomes. And how many chromatids were there per chromosome? Well, remember that in meiosis 2, the centrum is divided, meaning that the chromatids move to opposite ends of the cell. So actually at this point, there was only one chromatid per chromosome, because it looks something like this. And here was the second one, belonging to the homologous chromosome. So just to summarize, meiosis produces four haploid daughter cells. So remember they contain an n number of chromosomes. It involves two cell divisions. And remember the primary purpose of meiosis 1 is to halve the chromosome number. <laughs>